Coming up next on 16 WAPT News at 1030, a memorial service tomorrow for two nuns murdered in Holmes County. A live report. Plus, Jackson's mayor preaches to his congregation three days after a former employee filed a sexual harassment lawsuit against the city. And former Mississippi State standout Dak Prescott, starting for the Dallas Cowboys, will tell you when you can see him. And it's back to work and back to school for our Monday. Once again, temperatures will be on the hot side, starting off the morning into the low to mid 70s. Maybe a little bit of patchy fog, especially if you saw some rain out there for today. But temperatures quickly heating up into the mid 90s. Real field numbers 95 to 100 degrees. I'll let you know if this heat's going to stick around for the rest of the work week and also have the latest on tropical depression number nine. All right, thanks, Nathan. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tammy Eswick in for Scott Simmons. Friends, family, and colleagues gathered at St. Thomas Church in Lexington today to remember two nuns that were murdered. This is the same church where Sister Paula Merrill and Sister Margaret Held led regular Bible study classes. 16 WAPT's Candace Red is live tonight. Candace, it was a packed house there. Yes, that's right, Tammy. The church actually had to set up this huge tent with several chairs just for those people who couldn't get inside due to capacity. Now, as you mentioned, at least 200 people actually showed up to that church and it was to pay respects to Sister Paula, excuse me, to Sisters Paula Merrill and Sister Margaret Held. Now, during that wake, a priest read a positive sermon focused on love and forgiveness. Even before we knew who the perpetrator was, asking for prayers for the perpetrator or perpetrators. He or they would need more prayers. Sister Paula and Sister Margaret don't need prayers. God says if we don't forgive, he won't forgive us. We don't really have any choice in the matter. And that's what they would want us to do. That's what Sister Paula and Sister Margaret would say, is to have mercy. Now, several people saying they will miss the sisters in the community. And tonight, we're actually here live at the church. It is the Cathedral of St. Peter the Apostle. And this is where that memorial mass will be held tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. For now, live in Jackson, Candace Red, 16 WAPT News. A huge showing of love from that community. Thanks so much, Candace. Well, Jackson's mayor led his congregation Sunday three days after a former employee filed a sexual harassment lawsuit against the city. As 16 WAPT's Ali Ware reports, this could be a costly legal battle for the city of Jackson. 16 WAPT has confirmed Mayor Tony Yarbrough did preach at his church Sunday morning, but the church would not allow our cameras or our reporters inside the building. The mayor took the pulpit three days after a woman filed a sex-filled harassment lawsuit against him. I feel sorry for the mayor. I feel sorry for his family and his supporters. Ashby Foote is a councilman. He says if these accusations are true, the mayor should resign. I think the mayor should step down so the city can focus on the important budget issues we face you know, right now. City Council is holding a special meeting Tuesday morning to talk about the lawsuit and discuss their options for what has the potential to be a costly legal battle for the city. Allie Ware, 16 WAPT News. Well, the city of Vicksburg says they plan to use eminent domain to seize an abandoned hospital, the Coon Memorial Hospital has sat empty for years. The city's Board of Aldermen approved plans to allow the city to file a lawsuit to take the land. If approved, the city would have to pay market value for that property. Now you may remember, this is the same place where police say a now deceased murder suspect, Raphael McLeod, dumped the body of 69-year-old Sharon Wilson after he killed her. Ghost hunters found her body on the property in 2015. A homeowner shot and killed McLeod after he escaped from jail. Well, everyone from alligator hunters to Warren County deputies are searching the Mississippi River for a dump truck driver. Members of the Vicksburg Fire Department's dive team have even been in the water searching for this man. Deputies say Michael Collins was loading gravel into his dump truck. That's when it slipped backwards into the water. It happened Tuesday. Divers found the truck a day later, but no sign of Collins. Crews have been flying over that river, hoping to spot him as well. Well, two people killed after a charter bus crashed in Louisiana. As ABC's Marcy Gonzalez explains, investigators have discovered a disturbing fact about who was driving that bus. 
Put a little help. We got to get some fun up on this truck. Chaos on Interstate 10 in Louisiana. We got the whole interstate shut down. A charter bus crash shutting down the busy highway. State police saying earlier in the morning, a pickup truck was speeding on the slick roadway when it hit a guardrail. Firefighters responded, and minutes later, the charter bus slammed into the scene, hitting three firemen, two more vehicles, and that pickup truck. Get another ladder. We got another fireman that needs to be pulled up. Those three firefighters were thrown over the edge of the highway into the water below. One died from his injuries. You can see a helicopter waiting to transport some of the more than 40 other people injured. Another person who was in one of the cars the bus hit, that red Camry, also died. The interstate littered with debris. We need some help out here, quick. Police say the bus driver, Dennis Yasmir Amaya Rodriguez, does not have a license, is from Honduras and in the U.S. illegally. The dozens of people on the bus were workers heading to do construction and rebuilding in Baton Rouge following the historic flooding there earlier this month. Police believe those workers are also here illegally. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, New York. Well, troopers say the driver of that bus, that Honduran man, did not have a commercial driver's license. The National Weather Service says lightning killed three people in Mississippi this year so far. The latest, a Yalabusha County woman. Investigators say a bolt of lightning struck 51-year-old Donna Hendricks of Coffeeville. It happened Friday while she and her boyfriend were looking for arrowheads near Grenada Lake. The man was taken to the hospital. No word on his condition tonight. Well, repairs to Percy Quinn State Park are complete four years after Hurricane Isaac ruined a dam there. Park officials say the grounds are set to reopen to the general public on September 21st. The long-closed campground on the west side of the lake is reopened. Officials say they expect about 100 or actually 400 boats on opening day. Well, Clinton has a new fire chief. The mayor announced Clinton native Jeff Blackledge will take over as the new head of the department. Blackledge replaces former chief Barry Burnside. He resigned in July to accept a position at the Mississippi State Fire Academy. Blackledge has worked for the fire department since 1994. Well, week two of Blitz is in the books, and it's Sunday, so that means it's time once again to vote for the Blitz 16 Bank Plus Metro Player of the Week. Let's go ahead and take a look at those standout athletes from week two. First up, it's going to be senior running back Darius Mayberry from Clinton High School. Mayberry dominated in the field Friday night. He totaled five rushes for 65 yards and had two receptions for 85 yards totaling four touchdowns. His stats helped lead the Arrows to a win against Ridgeland in dominating fashion with a final score 56 to 14. Next up from Pisgah High School running back Don Ragsdale. The Blitz 16 one to watch athlete totaled 34 rushes for 355 yards and four total touchdowns. His big game paid off in a big way. Pisgah went on to win it over St. Aloysius 35 to 28. And finally James Smith the third from Velma Jackson High School. The senior running back totaled 11 rushes for 213 yards and three total touchdowns. He dominated in the running game as the Falcons went on to beat Canton 56 to 19. Now to vote, once again, you can dial 601-923-1986 and follow those instructions. Or another option that's now available, you can vote on the web at bankplus.net. Just click on the Blitz Vote Now button located on the homepage. Voting closes Wednesday at noon, and Sports Director Josh Jackson will announce the winner Wednesday night at 6 right here on 16 WAPT. College football action now. Mississippi College wrapped up their preseason camp this week as the Choctaws prepare for their first game of the season. This is the first year back in Division II and the Gulf South Conference since 1996 for MC. The coaching staff has increased its depth on the team this year, and come September 3rd, fans should expect big things from the Choctaws as they compete for a championship. The fans are excited, and they know that we're competing for a championship, and I think that goes for all our sports. Uh, football starts the year off, and that's uh, exciting. It's going to be a real good season, I feel, for us, the whole team. You know, and I just feel that we're going to have that spark that everybody would think we're not going to have. Fans can pack out Robinson Hale Stadium on September 3rd as the Choctaws welcome Point University to town. Well, just four days until the season officially begins for the Jackson State Tigers. Tony Hughes and his bunch play UNLV this Thursday. The squad continued practice in full pads this week. Although strong offensively, JSU hopes to win teams in the trenches. Senior center Marcus Cook has taken the reins as a leader this year. He's not only preparing himself mentally and physically, but he's taken the younger guys under his wing as well.
Um, Marcus Cook has really took a leadership role at the center position, has uh, really tested everybody, and then uh, kind of brought the group together as a family. So as uh, good as we are up front, be as good as we are as a team. Uh, just really try to help and improve everybody, uh, give them tools that I know, you know, just any form of help that I can do, freshmen, uh, show them the way, and things of that nature. The Rebels and Tigers hit the field at 9 p.m. on Thursday from Las Vegas. Well, folks, here we go. Starting for the Dallas Cowboys on September 11th will be none other than former Mississippi State standout Dak Prescott. Following the announcement of veteran signal caller Tony Romo's back injury on Saturday, there was still speculation regarding his timetable on a return. But lo and behold, Prescott has been named that starter. Although starting in an NFL game will be new to him, the rookie QB has unfortunately become a starter at every level of play because of an injury. This makes Prescott the first rookie quarterback to earn a starting job this season. While the wait is over, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race at Michigan featured an emotional ending. Kyle Larson captured the checkered flag, winning his very first Sprint Cup Series race of his career. The win earned Larson a spot in the chase for the Sprint Cup Championship, also a first in his career. The move shifting a winless Ryan Newman 15 points out of the last chase-eligible spot with just two races left in the regular season. Larson lost the lead to Chase Elliott in their final pit stops, but a caution on lap 187 gave him the chance he needed to pull the way to victory lane. And that'll do it for sports, but stick around. We'll be right back after this. Okay, we know what you want. You want the news. And like anyone around here, you want it fast and first. And right on point. Because who has any time to wait?